Marvel is the home of thousands of different characters. I've gotten to know almost all of them. In fact, the Marvel Universe has a countless number of stories just waiting to be told. And just like the real world, some Marvel heroes are still relatively unsung. While you may know Gillian Jacobs from her starring roles on Community, Love, or Girls, you might not know she's also a documentary filmmaker. You see, Gillian tells stories about unsung Marvel heroes too. So today, I'm in LA, chatting with her about why it's important to tell these stories, especially those that haven't been told. We might even do a little digging. I'm Joe Casada. I tell stories for a living. Welcome to Marvel Storyboards. Gillian in one of her favorite haunts in all of Hollywood. Gillian? Hey! I'm a huge fan of Gillian's character Britta on the show Community. Of course, I had to start by asking her how that came together. What was it like when you got the part? Oh, well, the final time I went in to audition, they said, you have to go in again, but you're going to know today if you got it or not, because there's a table read right after the audition. So whoever gets the part is going to go to the table read. I get there, there's Joel, Danny Pudi, all these other people, and they're like, I'm playing Abed, I'm playing Jeff. Who are you? Are you playing Brett? I was like, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> One of the producers of the show is sort of introducing everyone, and he goes, Joel McHale, Danny Pudi, Yvette Nicole, and Brown, and the newest member of our cast, Gillian Jacobs. So I'd gotten the part in the drive to the table read, and they didn't tell me okay. until they told me in front of everybody, and I started crying. Oh, that's <laughs> so, awesome. So the cast's first impression of me was like crying. We're your blubbering mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you've done you've done comedy, you've done drama, you've you, you you've been in front of the camera. Is directing the next thing for you? I'm kind of feeling that way at this yeah. moment. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I feel like I'm using whole new parts of my brain, going from feeling like an important piece in a puzzle to feeling like I'm putting together the puzzle. You've worked with you know a lot of great directors. Yes. Uh, you taken anything from that? And, oh, and absolutely. You spend a lot of hours on set as an actor, and you get to work with a lot of different directors. So I've just tried to keep my eyes and ears open and be curious, not just about them, but everybody on set. So I get a sense of the bigger picture. What I loved about drawing and writing comics is that you're sort of in our tour. You're the director, cinematographer, and the actors all at mm -hmm. once, right? And so there's a certain level of control. I try and think of it less about being in control and more about like leading a group of collaborators. Mm -hmm. So I just try and stack my deck as well as I can with really smart people. You're doing something for Marvel now, aren't you? Yes. I am directing a one-hour documentary about women who worked at Marvel over the years. Okay. If we're going to get into this, <laughs> we now have to go to my type of bookstore. All right. You game? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Let's go. Thank you. At Marvel, we tell the stories of these heroes doing these incredible things and very public, but it's really the the, the heroes that we don't know about that, that, that I find fascinating. Yeah, I, that's for me too. I made a, a short documentary about this woman named Grace Hopper, who was a, a computer pioneer. In doing your research on her, what surprised or what shocked you? A, I knew nothing about these secret computers during World War II. And what really surprised me was the number of women who were working on these computers. And so once I realized that Grace Hopper wasn't like the only woman of that era who worked in computing and that actually there was a whole group of them, um, that's when I got really excited. There's this perception that it's, you know, a man's job, but to realize that the very earliest days of computing, there were women doing these jobs. I thought it was a really exciting thing to discover. Did you know you wanted to be an actress? I did, yes. So my mom put me in an acting class when I was eight years old, and I just took to it immediately, and I was obsessed with it, and that's all I wanted to do. I'm going to venture. You're in front of the mirror. You're performing something. <laughs> Who did you want to be? I wanted to be Macaulay Culkin. OK. <laughs> So now I'm going to take you to one of my favorite places in LA. I always stop by Golden Apple Comics whenever I'm in town. You ready for this? I'm ready. I'm going to take you to the mountaintop. Okay. All right. Julia? Thank you. Welcome to Golden Apple Comics. God, this is incredible. Now you're in my neighborhood. 
been reading back to back Captain Marvel Captain for the last Marvel's few right. weeks. I've been reading them all on my iPad, so it's really great to be <laughs> around physical copies <laughs> of comics. Well, that's oh. right, paper. Yes, they paper. have a touch and yeah. feel to them. So you've started reading comics now for this documentary yes. you're doing, right? My documentary is about all the incredible women who have worked at Marvel, starting really with Marie Severin, Flo Steinberg, and then going through to present day where it feels like there's been this whole big push for these exciting female characters that are leading comics. Characters like Ms. Marvel and Squirrel Girl and writers like G. Willow Wilson and Kelly Sue DeConnick and Sana Amina. I love talking to somebody who's just sort of getting into the the hobby or, yes. or, or, or the biz of comic books. I think Squirrel Girl is a personal favorite of mine. She's really into computers. She studies computer science. I have a whole interest in women in STEM, so I feel a real connection to Squirrel Girl. <laughs> I love it. The young Sung Hero, we were talking about this a little bit. Brie Severin was a really important yes. part of Marvel. This is awesome, right? This is awesome, awesome art. The fact that this woman in this era was able to do that and have success and have a sustained career there, that is a significant achievement. And also women working behind the scenes, like kind of reframing people's notions of what's an important contribution to a company and saying like a woman working in the sales department who started a cash register program for comic book stores across the country, that's an important part of comic book history. And we should know that as well as we know the artists and the writers. Anna Sentis, in a lot of ways, is instrumental to me continuing to read comics. Really? You know what, I want to show you. D for my favorite character. This is an Anna Sentis book. Yes! I read comics as a kid, right? And then around the age of 12, I gave them comics. And uh, didn't rediscover them until I was 25. So I went to a comic shop and I picked up Veritable, and it was written by Frank Miller, and it was mm -hmm. a story called Born Again. It changed my life. When Frank was not doing Daredevil, I was expecting to let that, but it never did. Anne's quality of writing was so darn good. She was not afraid to deal with the politics of the time. She was not afraid to deal with the social issues of the time, the environment. Everything was really in her work. She was fearless, absolutely fearless. Also, Marvel was pretty fearless because they're like, yeah, go, go. do your thing. I realized, you know, I think I may want to try to work in this field. Wow. I thought that woman comics is another outlet for storytelling. Joe, can I see some of your work? Okay. Oh, wow. Look at you. Look at me. Do you remember doing this issue, or is it all just... It's a blur. I look at these pages, and it's just like I'm looking at them for the first time, and then I see the mistakes. Yeah, that's how I feel watching myself act. So what was Marvel Knights? What was this imprint? We came up with this plan for Marvel Knights, and we launched four books. We launched Daredevil, Black Panther, Inhumans, and The Punisher. That led me to become yeah. editor-in-chief and run all the books. Wow. We all have an origin story. OK. What is Gillian Jacobs' origin story? Mine would probably be my character was born out of solitude, um, being an only child with not a lot of friends, with a single mom. Only child, too. Yes, reading a lot, um, kind of living in my imagination, and then finding a place. So I go to Professor Xavier's school, which is like my acting class on right. Saturdays, and we all find each other there, and I have friends for the first time, and I tap into my power of acting. Were you a member of the Mary Marvel Marching Society? I wasn't, no, no, I was not. Did you ever sing the song? I know the song by heart. You belong, you belong, you belong, you belong to, to the, the Mary, Mary Marvel, Marvel Marching Society. <laughs> and come along, come along, come <laughs> along, sing a song with the Mary Marvel Marching Society. Hey, should we buy some comics? Ooh, I see a Power Pack classic. My yes, comics please, right please. Here. Oh, I love Ms. Marvel. Anacenti, for your research. When I'm in LA, I don't get to go to Golden Apple. I gotta go around the corner to Pink's. Pink's hot dogs. Let's go. Let's do this. Oh my God! Look at this. I've never seen a message in mustard before. Pink's <laughs> loves more. How awesome is that? Every great story, the hero at some point, they've got their back against the wall. Mm -hmm. They've got a decision to make. And it's a make or break moment. What's your third act moment where you had your back against the wall? Oh my gosh. And there was a decision you had to make. Before I got community and I really thought, I don't know if I'll ever work as an actor. Maybe I should just give this up and try and get a, a real job. Um, and I don't know if it was fear or determination or a combination of the both, but I just sort of stuck it out. Um, even though 
it didn't seem likely that I was ever gonna have any kind of success. Who's a solitary superhero? Who doesn't confide in anyone? Wolverine. I'm a Wolverine. Okay. Many have said. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not really great at like talking it out with people. Mm -hmm. So it's always a very like lonely internal right. moment, my top of the third act moment. You've accomplished a great career up until this young point in your life. Directing is the next thing. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to take this? I would like to direct a movie. Uh -huh. um, I'd like to also be a producer of things, not just that I'm in, but projects in general, and spend as much time behind the camera as in front of it. Yeah. That's sort of where I see myself. I want to thank you. Oh, thank you. Because this has been just fantastic. It was really a blast being with you and, and, uh, and getting to know your story. And I'm looking forward to the stories you're going to be telling us in the future. I want to eat that hot dog. Eat it. Okay. I'm going to eat these french fries. All right. <laughs> it's important to discover untold stories. But Gillian reminded me it's equally important to champion fresh voices who bring fresh perspectives and make us rethink the stories we thought we already knew. <laughs>